And so I'm just going to go round robin and talk about how do you define digital transformation and then we're going to have the groups work on it. So Peggy, you want to go first? How do you define digital transformation? You know, um, that's a really good question. <laughs> And, and we change a little bit our answer on a daily basis, I think. Um, you know, we're just the beginning stages of gathering the information we need to determine how to best digitalize our environment. And not just locally, but obviously globally. Um, we don't have a lot of shared product between our plants, um, product coming in for manufacturing purposes, um, but there's definitely value in um, having the information shared amongst all of our all of our sites sharing brands. Do you use the term digital transformation? We do not. Okay, all right. Mitch, how do you define digital transformation? Yeah, I'm coming at it from the uh, perspective of a part manufacturer. And, and so we, we think about having all the work instructions with how to make something in a digital format. And that's more than just the CAD data. That's, you know, inspection instructions, material certifications, um, post-processing stuff if you have to install thread inserts or whatever you have to do, of having the entire product manufacturing instructions in a digital format which allows you to move that to anywhere in the world to make that very quickly. And so all the work instructions follow it. And then the history of that. Because in the aerospace we have to have uh, all the certifications, the sign-offs, uh, you know, where it was done, by, by who, etc. And so you could keep that digital thread from initiation of an order to make something all the way through tracking it after it was made and all the way through the life cycle of that part. Okay. Brian, are you using the term digital transformation? Uh, we don't. Um, but I, I think for me, it's, uh, sometimes it implies more complexity. I think it's almost the opposite. Yes. It's about simplifying things. So when you think about what we've done with DDMRP previously, we had no issue with having lots and lots of data, being able to transmit that around the organization, but what did it mean? What could people do with it? How did they respond and react to it appropriately? Who knows? By simplifying everything with DDMRP, effectively now we can transmit that data all around the organization. Everyone can interpret it, knows what to do with it, knows how to respond to it, knows what the real priorities are. I think that's a really great point because I think as we've built global supply chains, we've gone to larger batches, longer shipping times, more complexity, and I think now is a good time for us to kind of unwind that challenge complexity and think about how we do translation and sensing much better. Our supply chains don't sense. They basically are in a traditional rote kind of response. John, do you use, you do use the term digital transformation, of course. It was yeah, in almost, your presence. Almost, I was laughing. I said, yeah. in, in our company now, if you want to get money for a project, <laughs> the <laughs> digital in front of it, whether it is or it isn't. Um, yeah, so I think it's, uh, you know, so that's our challenge right now. We have kind of the reverse problem is, you know, everybody says, well, everybody's calling everything digital, and it really isn't. So I, I think of it really in three things, because we're a manufacturing company, first of all. So if you walk out on the floor, Things should not be done manually. They should be done in a repetitive, um, you know, what you talked about. What you t I mean, these are absolute, that, that to me is digital. When you see that, I mean, that's digital. Um, I think the second thing is um, around the visibility, um, allowing peop the, the, the people to see everything. Because a digital uh, digita digitization allows visibility, and I use the Uber app as a great mm -hmm. example. You know where your car is. It doesn't matter that it's 20 minutes, 10 minutes, 5 minutes. That's okay because you feel like you're in control. And I think the third thing you said, um, you talked about simplification. I, I really think it needs to be easy um, for people to want to use it because we have thousands of employees. You have to train them. You want them to use the tools, but it has to be easy. And again, I think the success of these digital companies is, be, is because they've made their tools simple. So, you know, we're talking about 3D printing. I mean, my gosh, is, you know, has it been around for a while? But yet, the reason why it's starting to take hold is now some of those machines actually are really easy to use. Yeah. And the applications can take ca data right off the engineer's workstation right to the manufacturing floor, mm -hmm. which is really amazing. 
When I was at Jabel, though, you've got a wonderful example of how you've changed your mind as you've gone from, you know, the traditional machining to additive and how you think about that. It's just a wonderful example. I, uh, people should go see it. It's, it's really, really a great example. Okay, so on your tables, and if we can start the timer here for 25 minutes, what I want you to do is first define what does digital mean, and then talk about how do you drive an organizational digital transformation. And I'm going to have you feed back to us and ask the panel questions. So let's have a dialogue. Okay, let's kind of pull up now and share. So what I'd like to do is have each of the tables check in with us, summarize your discussion very briefly, like in a sentence or two, and check in with us. So which group wants to go first? Okay, Joe, uh, Ann, if you can move uh, the mic to Joe. All right, so we came up, I think, with two key points. One is that digital transformation probably started in the late 80s, early 90s with the first big ERP implementations. And so this is a journey that's been quite a long one uh, and probably a lot of disappointment along the way. Uh, and guys, what was the other one? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that, uh, uh, that digitizing a bad design uh, does not make a good design. <laughs> and, and that uh, we need to be open to digitization as uh, augmenting uh, human capability as opposed to uh, jumping right to replacing it. Okay, great. Sam, one of the tables on your side. All right, so uh, we took this in two different parts, which is one, what does digital mean? And we looked at that as uh, defining mapping and simplification and automation of processes. It was uh, transparency, sharing information across the organization, across individuals, turning tacit knowledge into explicit processes, uh, and optimization using technologies uh, such as mobile and cloud to bring that data capture and visualization closer to the process and thereby looking at a reduction of latency. Um, we also approached the second set of the question in there, which is how do you enable that transformation? And this is, again, looking at those small steps. Um, we call it additive stacks of value. How do we add new processes onto existing successes? So things like uh, onto the stack, adding in things like predictive maintenance. It's the, the capture of tribal knowledge and expertise and intellectual property in these flows. And then importantly, acting on it, do, taking action with that. Um, and enabling those who are performing the work uh, to be part of the transformation process. Okay, great. And your next table. Okay, so, so, I, so our group looked at what digital meant, what digital transformation meant. So, so we looked at it from the perspective of, of processes. So, so we talked about uh, processes and how those processes will, uh, will transform how, how people work, how people w will react, etc. One of the one of the issues is is when you when you change it from a uh, from an Excel spreadsheet uh, Excel spreadsheet scenario to something else, how does that how does that group or how do those people react? And if you change it from a manufacturing perspective, uh, when, when you when you take the decision making from the worker, how do, how do they respond? So so those are did I miss anything? No. Okay. Yes, and, the, and what was the definition of digital, so. Great. Thank you. Sam, your next table. So we started by agreeing that each one of us has a different definition of what yes. that meant. And then we talked about kind of components that we've been actually reviewing during the conference. Uh, the first one was the outside in, that when you talk about a digital transformation, you really have your customer in mind. And we talked about leveraging the power of electronics and um, computer power for you to be able to predict and through analyzing the data, be able to deliver additional value to your, to your customers. Um, am I missing components? Great, thank you. And your next table? Yes, 
We took a step back and started by defining automation, uh, which is separate from digitization. Um, we kind of came to a consensus that when you're talking about automation processes, you're taking an, a, a, an existing process or um, occurrence that's happening and getting rid of manual touches. And then the digitization would then be when you're taking the data that you have and then utilizing that data from the automation process. Um, yeah, I think that's... That was the essence. Well, great. Thank you. <laughs> Sam, your next table. Hi. So we talked about the transparency and visibility of the process but the fact that it needed to be done with a goal in mind. So you don't just want the data, you actually need it to be there for a reason. Um, and we also talked about the fact that the um, process transformation is not new. So Michael Hammer and James Champy were doing that uh, a long time ago and had some great lessons on what works and what doesn't work in transformation. And one of the biggest ones was that culture is the number one hardest thing to change. And so some of the challenges we talked around, and in fact that Brian mentioned earlier for BT, were all related to culture. <coughs> so we were having a good debate on the best ways of trying to do that top down, but how it sometimes stalls in the middle. Um, we haven't solved it yet. Okay. Talent. Yep. And your next table. So we talked about a lot of things that were very similar to the themes that the other tables have come up with, but I think one of the things that were, was kind of unique was the perspective that in the technology industry, they don't, they don't really talk about this because everyone within their company has this kind of digital um, technology enabled mindset. So even the president or the CEO of the company understands how to write an API and understands how to do SQL and get their own data and so moving from this manual spreadsheet driven post-it note you know kind of culture is not it's not even part of the discussion for them and there's probably a lot that the process and the discrete manufacturing industry can really learn from that yes I absolutely Sam your next table Hi, yeah, we had two main topics. Um, one of them around the organization is that we can see in, in some of our groups that we have support at the executive leadership and we may also kind of see the advantages at the, at the shop floor, but we've got that middle management still that's struggling to understand that digital transformation. Um, and the other um, point that we had was that if you require an ROI for innovation, it's not really innovation. So true, so true. You know, one of the best read Forbes articles that I've written is have the talk with the CFO that you don't want to bound this by a definite ROI. It really needs to be open to the outcome, right? And because you're dead on arrival. Next table. We, <coughs> we talked uh, a lot about digital transformation being about the customer experience. Um, and we went round and round on what does that mean for each of us, each of our companies. And we also talked about digital transformations more than just supply chain. To be transformation, it has to be all functions. They all have to feel it. They all have to contribute. And then finally, we talked about the convergence of B2C to B2B and how, from a generational standpoint, that driver, no matter what your personal feelings are, is something that many of us have to deal with if you're in the B2B space. That you know, the Amazons, the Alibaba, what they're driving is we just have to deal with that and figure out a way to combat that so we don't get disinter disintermediated from the value chain. Okay. Uh, yes. So we just had a, a couple key points, hopefully, on digitization. Uh, I think some common themes that were discussed were, of course, these words we all think about. Uh, connectivity, visibility, and automation came out quite a bit. And that led us to kind of break digitization down really into two different categories. Uh, one we described as digitization of transactions, and this is really about, you know, cost savings or efficiencies or productivity, and we think this is something that, you know, most everyone embraces, but we thought the more value-added piece of it was really digitization of decisions and analytics, and where, again, we talked about getting people out of their spreadsheets and really looking at boards of information to really drive 
risk and value decisions, uh, and that's where the opportunity is. We're also uh, you know, fascinated by the concept of how do you drive the change, right? Because we've heard from a couple of our speakers that the change management is one of the toughest pieces, and, and I certainly can relate to that. Uh, I think we all acknowledge it. I, I may be a little short on tips and tricks as to how to overcome it, uh, because some of us, myself included, will push for these things because we know inherently they are good, because we know the sky is blue. Uh, but that doesn't drive the change in our organization. I really like the theme we keep coming back to that says, tie it to a problem. You know, what are you really trying to achieve? And that'll help drive it home. So hopefully we're on the right track. Awesome. Good feedback. Uh, all reported <coughs> in over here? One more. One more. Okay. Okay. So we discussed what's so new. When I hear, listen to your customer. Excuse me, when I went to university, agreed 35 years ago, the hell, you listen to your customer. So what has changed that we do not listen to our customer? And my answer was shareholder value. We put cost, we put efficiency, effectiveness, profitability above everything. And what is happening now today with digital is that the consumer market, that the people have new technologies they are working with which makes their life easy and they expect us as big companies to do that as well. And so we need to go back and to listen to them, to help them to understand, to work with our customers, but also to work with our vendors because vendors were treated as a necessary evil. They are not treated as partners and, and that is something which, which digital transformation basically leads to that the technology which has been introduced brings us back to, to the way of doing good business and not driving only profitability and shareholder value. Okay. So what speaks to you of this discussion? John, you know, you hear this discussion. What speaks to you? Well, it's pretty diverse. Yeah, very diverse. <laughs> um, back to the same thing. We don't all have a common definition of digital. No, we don't. We don't all have the common definition of supply chain. I mean, I really yes. think supply chain is from the customer's customer to supplier's supplier. For the last two decades, we've made supply chain very functional, and uh, we've tried to automate it within customer service or transportation or procurement, yeah. yeah. Brian, what spoke to you? I think the simplicity piece. Um, I think we've spent probably the last 10, 15 years just making stuff more and more and more complicated. Yes. And, and actually, it's time to... And step back that. that a little bit and simplify things so that the rest of the organization, not just supply chain, can, can understand it all. Yeah, and you know, I think as we became more global and we got kind of enmeshed in this technology that came from client server, we made it far too complicated and you know, too rigid. Uh, and I think that's great. Mitch, how about you? What spoke to you? Yeah, certainly the, the diversity of, uh, it's just different for each company, obviously, the diversity of how we, how we think about it. But, but, but I think the one, you know, someone touched on culture is the hardest thing. And, 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 and I think that's what it sort of comes back to, is that the processes are pretty darn good these days, you know, overcomplicated or simplified or whatever. But the greatest challenge to is, is culture, and I think that's, um, that's where the rubber meets the road. You can't get people to adopt it, then it's never going to work. Peggy, how about yourself? What spoke to you? I mean, uh, the same thing he just said, it's, it's culture. And I actually <coughs> thought of questions as people were talking. I wish you guys were up here so I could ask them because I'd love to know who in the company is driving digitalization. Is it IT or is it the business, right? It comes back to the culture. Well, let's see a handful. How many of you have a digital strategy or working on digital? Let's see a show of hands, okay? Let's keep your hand up if it's business. Okay, so it gives you an idea, right? Uh, now, most of the time I find business and IT are not aligned. Uh, you know, one of the issues is we're on these long roadmap implementations of yesterday's technologies, right? And people don't know what to do with that, but I find most times it's driven by the business. And I find a lot of times there's a lot of energy from some senior leader who's woken up one day and says, maybe Amazon's going to recreate me or, you know, mm -hmm. so there's kind of that fear factor. But I don't see it driven by IT right now. No. And I think that's the second question I have is how many companies have a chief digital officer? 
that's driving this and did they come from the business or IT? I mean, that's another really big question that's out there in a lot of the businesses right now that are driving it as... Well, let's see. How many have a chief digital officer? Hmm. Two. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Business, and right, Ralph? Came from the business. IT. IT, see? Okay. I think you find they, yeah. Business, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, so, not a lot, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, not a clear template. Okay, we've got time for about five minutes worth of questions. So, uh, if someone has questions, raise your hand. Sam and Ann will run the mics. Trevor has a question. Ralph has the mic. So, yeah, okay, so you're going to share. <laughs> Well, I couldn't help but wonder when Mitch in particular was talking about work instructions, etc., and how that actually reflects what we mean by digitization. Because all, if all you're doing is taking manual work instructions that were in a book and putting those into a digital form, I don't think that's digitization. That might be automation or something else mm -hmm. like that. So the necessary part is to actually think about what work is involved mm -hmm. and how the work can change as opposed to just saying we're going to take an existing process mm -hmm. and put it into a digital form. Yeah. So a question, Trevor, or yeah, a statement? So, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so my, my question is, am I correct? <laughs> yeah. that's, a, that's a great question. No, no. So, <laughs> so, so I think you know, when, when, when I think about digitizing product information, work instructions, is to ensure consistency, right? Because let's say we let's say the use of 3D printing or additive manufacturing as an example. There's a lot of choices that get made in the digital file that drive that printer. How is the part oriented when it's being made? What is the thickness of the layers? What is the speed that it's going? <coughs> and if you did not have consistency among your digital data set, you could have parts being made in different places, but not consistently. And so I think you, you are right, but I think <coughs> driving consistency is where the value really happens. So that if you make a part in Singapore, and you make it in Hamburg, and you make it in Louisville, it's the same part. Okay, other questions? <laughs> Okay, so let's thank our panel. Thank you very much.